It was Mrs. Haney's second grade class. I, Will Snell, was in the classroom as a second grader at Regent School of Austin. Classical Christian school, 80 kids per grade. Mrs. Haney was going around the room asking, what do you want to be? Her firefighter, athlete, car salesman. She got to me. She said, Will, what do you want to be? I said, I want to be black. She goes, <laughs> she goes what? <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, because none of, none of the rappers I listen to and none of the athletes I want to be, they're not white guys. <laughs> she said, all right, next part. <laughs> that moment on is a story my buddies and I still tell to this day. But in second grade and growing up, I loved rap music. From visiting 106 in Park at my uncle's studio to meeting rappers in the restaurant with my aunt, I loved the industry. I wanted to be a rapper in a rap crew so bad. These were my idols. They were so cool. The one day I figured out how to screenshot on an iPad on an iPod, I made Jay-Z my, my cover. And I thought my screensaver was just the best. But I loved rap music. But this is the story that I got to live the gangster rapper lifestyle. And it's the one story I've actually never told my mom. I told my mom just about everything I've ever done. This is the one story that my parents have never heard. So it's, it's a doozy. I can watch it. <laughs> I was in San Diego for my annual cross trip. We were in Salona Beach with my travel lacrosse team. Yes, the kid that wanted to be a rapper was in Salona Beach with a lacrosse team. <laughs> <laughs> we had practice that day, but we came back to the hotel and said, what, what are we doing tonight, guys? We decided we were going to California Pizza Kitchen because it was the local thing to do. The boys from Texas, we were going to CPK and the beach. After getting our pizza, we walked over to Salona Beach. But on the way, we grabbed tiki torches and a lighter. So we were carrying our torches, posted up on the beach, <clears throat> ran in the water. Dried off, got out, kept walking down the beach. Set up shop, made a campfire. Just good old country boys at the beach. You're living the dream. <laughs> but in that moment, we saw 11 people approaching us real quick. We didn't think much of it. I mean, there were 23 of us, and we thought we were pretty cool, so we didn't think anything in these 11. But as they approached, they sat with us. They started talking to us, asking us questions. I got a little skeptical, a little uncomfortable. And I got very uncomfortable when one of them pulled a needle out and offered us ketamine. Now, the white kid from Regent School of Austin did not know what this was. And I associated needles with, like, doctors and getting better. So I was just confused at this point. <laughs> But I leaned over because I knew the kid next to me went to public school and I knew he was going to go with me. So I said, I said, well, what's a He said, you don't know? I said, no. Because it's a horse tranquilizer. The hobo is by the train tracks going by Austin High. I said, what? I said, what are you talking about? I said, do we to get out of here? He's like, no, it's okay, it's okay, like, don't worry about it. We're gonna be all right. I was like, dude, this is bad, not good. So so I started doing my little buzz. You know, and so I kind of put together a little crew. Eventually we, we put out the fire and we all start walking. And we realized our night was over, we got a big game the next day, so we start walking back. We take the stairs up and we hit the road where the hotel was. We're home free, about to walk home. Until I heard that was the worst mistake of your short lives. We turned around the street. We saw the 11 with six inch Bowie knives chasing us in the dead sprint. I was so in shock um, <laughs> that I looked at the guy next to me and I said, what are we gonna do? We gotta split up. And I was like, I mean, I've seen James Bond, but are we sure we wanna split up? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, we gotta head to our bed. So, we went in twos, but I was so scared and slow. I, I, I'm not a very in-shape person. Uh, <laughs> it it's, takes a lot for me to get going. So I was slower than everybody else, so I was like, I'm on my own. I'm on my own. I'm the slow guy on the team. I just sit by the goal and just catch and shoot. That, that was my job on the team. So I, I'm running. I'm slowest. So I take a left, and I stop in a 7-Eleven. And I'm walking around 7-Eleven. Like nothing happened. Trying to lose me. Walk out of the 7-Eleven. 
I go on a jack in the box, thinking I might need a snack before I run back, but I didn't get anything to eat. Instead, I sat in the bathroom and just waited. Didn't have a cell phone on me, but I was scared to death. But also in that moment in the bathroom, I was like, this is kind of cool, a little dangerous, dipping my toe in what I thought was so awesome. <laughs> so I walk out of the bathroom and I hit the street again. I'm about a quarter of the way there, and I hear, we got it, we saw another one. I see one of them on my tail again. And I swore, oh my god, are you kidding me? <laughs> so now it was me, someone behind me, chasing me for my life. I was in a dead sprint, saw a side stairwell, and there was the entrance on the other side. I was so gassed, I was so tired. My heart was racing, so I figured I gotta go up the side stairwell, so I went to get it. I'm running up the stairs and I realized, I left my key on the beach. I had left my holiday in room key. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I hear him make that first step. There's nowhere to go but up these stairs and then the door. The door is locked. Third to last step. Second to last step. Last step. I thought it was curtains. The boy turned around. And I was like, oh my god, this is, this is the end of my life. And I was like, oh my god, he's going to kill me. Like, I'm, de I'm dead. I'm a dead person. Um, I, I had faith growing up. I went to church. And, and it, was all, it was all roses growing up in suburban Austin, Texas. It, I had a great life. Right? So I was like, you know, it's, it was a little morbid of me, but I was like, yeah, I had a good run. <laughs> You're my buddies. So. Um, but dying in a holiday was not. Not the cards for me. I would not let myself die on holiday. So I heard the door creak. And I turn as he's lunging at me with the knife, cut my shorts, and I see the door open like this. And I see a bucket of dirty water that the maid was going to dump off the stairwell. And I grab the bucket and I chucked it at his face. <laughs> and square in the face. Stumbled. And I slammed the door. And just started screaming, running in the hallway. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> so I'm running through the holiday, and we made it up to the hotel, made it to the pool. The whole team was there, and we looked over the edge, and we saw him around the hotel, the academy, as we call them. So we started throwing rocks at them. They ran away. <laughs> <laughs> but what I learned from this entire experience, and a crazy story that we can look back and laugh at is to watch your thoughts, they become your actions. Watch your words, those become your actions. Watch your actions because they become your character. Watch your character because it becomes your legacy. Thank you so much. Mm.